The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. Gospel of the Lord. The site of the healing is important because Jericho is a type, a type of hell, a type of where we start from on our pilgrimage toward home. Jericho is an ancient city, 8,000 years old at the time of Jesus. It's 850 feet below sea level. The Dead Sea is to its south, around whose shores now stand, or then stood, the ancient ruins of Sodom and Gomorrah. And when we greet our Lord and the disciples, they're on their way out of town a good direction in Jericho. They're heading up to Jerusalem, and literally up, thousands of feet of an ascent. It is this last ascent of Jesus that will end in his passion and death. So that's the context. And along the way, is stationed a blind man. Now, blind men always stand in for us to some extent because we're spiritually blind. So they stand in for us. His name is Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. And as would have been the norm of that day, he's begging by that roadside. Many pilgrims, of course, pass him by, but he's stuck in Jericho. He's not going anywhere. Blind men don't walk up to Jerusalem. As they approach his spot, he cries out to Jesus, Son of David, have pity on me. He's heard of Jesus. He can't see, but he can hear. 
That's what you're hearing now. We start with the gospel proclaimed and then the sacrament received. It's always this way. You hear first the gospel, you receive it interiorly, and then you can receive the fullness of Christ. That's sight. Why it's heaven is called the beatific vision. Son of David is a messianic title. The first time in public someone's called him that. Of course, the disciples are trying to hustle him along. These guys still don't get it, but they're going to. Jesus calls Bartimaeus to him. He's heard him even if his disciples have not. And he says this, what do you want me to do for you? Now that's significant because in the pericope immediately before this, which we heard last week, he says the exact same words to James and John. The exact same words. What do you want me to do for you? They wanted power for their own benefit. They wanted rule. And then the other ones chimed in, if you recall. They wanted power too. What does Bartimaeus say? Now consider this. The disciples those on Jesus' team want to pass him by. So what does Bartimaeus, the person they want to pass by, say to Jesus? I want to see. Have mercy on me. I certainly hope it shamed the disciples who immediately before this want power. Not I want to see, serve, I want power. My agenda. Artemis, his agenda. The Lord's agenda. And what does Bartimaeus do after this? He throws off his cloak rushing to Jesus. This is a sign of baptism. The old man sloughs off the old self like a snakeskin, taking on the new self, the new man, the new Adam in Christ. And then he follows him. Jesus says, go your way. Not dismissing him, go your way. But he knows his way now, for he sees and he follows them. Jerusalem. For us this morning, this account raises many questions with respect to our faith. Because, let's be honest, we're probably sitting in that group of people following Jesus because we follow Jesus. But it's always good to ask ourselves some point-blank questions. Do we want to see? Because sight is going to show us false values, illusions we cling to. Things we think we love that we don't, or shouldn't. So do we want to see? Are we then willing to instantly cast off the cloak of our disordered attachments and possessions? We probably aren't, and that's why I'm not really interested in seeing. Do we wish salvation only on our own terms. 
our agenda. Do we follow Jesus, but only, <clears throat> only so long as things go as planned? So long as it's okay to be a Christian? What happens when it's embarrassing, deadly, costs us jobs? Are we long gone when the path begins to lead steeply upwards, not to Jerusalem the Great, but to Calvary? Recall, my friends, that the new man that comes forth from the font has agreed to go to Calvary with Jesus. There's no exceptions to that. We may not be crucified literally, but we will be crucified. All those old things we cling to have to die, or we can never know heaven. It is the mount of the skull, after all, Calvary. The skull of the old Adam. Do we see now and do we recognize our own blindness? Or are we filled with an arrogant assurance that we already see, and like the Pharisees say, thank God I'm not like that slob, the publican over there. For if we're so filled, how can we approach this altar this morning and have any room within us to receive our Lord? and master in fullness. So my friends, pray to Bartimaeus. Ask that he help us to learn to really and truly and deeply beg with persistence to the Lord Jesus. And in doing so, not to take no for an answer.